Today we're going to talk about narrow focus beams of light for video, like I'm using right now, and also for flash photography. Now why would you want to use something like this? Well this is a little extreme, let's make it a little more realistic. There, this is a little bit more realistic. I'm talking about where you want to focus a little bit more light on the person's face or the subject that you're trying to feature in the video. In this case, it's me right here. This is the important part. The rest of it gets a little bit darker. So how do you put a beam of light just right here and not everywhere. Now I use these things a lot, but I don't hear anybody else talking about them. Now all they ever use is soft boxes and that's not very creative. All right, so like I said, there's for video, like I'm using right now with this big contraption right here, and also for flash photography. Now flash photography, for me at least, is usually on location, which means I need something really small, lightweight, and portable. So let's start with that. All right, so my main big light when I go on location is the AD600, and it has a Bowens mount. And usually, I use this. This is a uh, standard seven inch reflector with a plastic uh, diffuser on the front. This is just a standard throw diffuser. This is the pattern that it puts out. It's a nice, soft, smooth light. It's what I use for almost everything. Now, if I want to throw a beam of light on just a person's face, this is what they usually suggest you use. I think these, th these things freak me out. They look like some kind of sex toy. This is just weird. I don't know what, I mean, it's Bowen's mount. You can mount it on the thing like this. And it has a uh, little grid on the end of it. And I never quite understood the stepping edges of here, why it does that, I don't know. But this is what they suggest you use. I never use these things. It does produce a nice narrow beam of light, but it's kind of big and clunky. So when you're traveling, it just takes up a bunch of space. So I don't use these. What I like to use is, the, I just use the standard bowl reflector that it comes with, but I put on here this thing. This is a 10 degree honeycomb grid. I've already made several videos about this. I'll put the links down below. And what this is, it's a really fine honeycomb that only lets the light go in a certain direction. They come in different degrees. This is 10 degree, which is a very narrow beam. And then they have wider ones like 30, 50, whatever. So this just fits right in the reflector like that. Really simple and you just attach it onto here and now you get a beam like this. Look at the difference. This is the normal reflector with the diffuser on the front and this is with the 10 degree honeycomb grid. Big difference. And it's still a nice strong light. This is perfect for me. So here I am doing a photo shoot with the 8600 and a standard reflector. As you can see her whole body's lit up wonderfully and now I'm putting on the honeycomb grid and this is what it does. Now it only focuses the light on her upper body. It's not a hard edge which is great. So it feathers off nicely around the edges and puts a nice focus on her face and upper body. Body. So this is a standard diffuser and this is with the honeycomb grid. I use this a lot in almost every photo shoot. I use it at least for some of the pictures. 10 degrees is the perfect throw for this. So the, again, I'm using the same bowl. There's nothing special or big or clung. It's just a little flat thing that you put on there. So for creating a little beam of light, this is all you need. This is pretty amazing, huh? All right, so this is with a AD600, this is the big clunky one. The AD200, same thing. For normal use, I have a 4.7 inch reflector with a diffuser on the front. This is a ADS2. This was originally made for the AD360, but it fits perfectly on the AD200. They make this thing here, an ADS11. Notice the honeycomb is bigger. That's because this is a 50 degree. Notice it says 50 on there. This is a 50 degree honeycomb grid. This is quite a bit different than the 10 degree. Look at the difference between the 50 and the 10. A lot smaller honeycombs here. This is bigger. Here's the normal throw with the diffuser on the front, and here's the throw with the 50 degree honeycomb grid. It's not a very narrow beam. I never use these things. I mean, why don't they have a 10 degree that goes on this? They make it for the, 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 the big one, but not why not for the little one? Anyway, this is a set that comes with uh, gels and things. I never use this. This is another thing I don't use. All right, so what do I use for the AD200? Well, let me show you. Again, they have this stupid sex toy thing that they give you. I don't use that. So what I do like to use is, now obviously you can use, you know, some of you are gonna say this, but uh, there's a Fresnel that comes with the 8200 that you can put on the front here. 
I don't like using the Fresnel. It puts out a bluish light. It's not a nice daylight balance light like this is. So I don't use this. This is the throw that it has. It's not a perfect little narrow beam of light like I want. I don't know, it's not good enough for me. So I never use these things. I like to use this thing. This is a tiny little snoot. Look how small this thing is. This is so great. I even use this as a bulb protector sometimes. This is an ADS-9 costs like nine bucks or something like that. And this is the beam that it puts out. Now we have a little tiny beam. This is with a normal diffuser, the 4.7 inch, and here's with the little ADS-9 snoot. Okay, that's without the light. Nice. So that turned out really cool. So this is great. This isn't the only way to make a beam of light with the AD200. There's also this thing here. This is a beauty dish. Beauty dish ADS4. And this goes on here. So if you want to have just this, a beauty dish for, you know, fashion photography, you could just use it like that. But this does not create a beam of light. This is what a normal beauty dish throw is. This beauty dish comes with this honeycomb grid. Now look at this, this is pretty cool. A nice, beautiful, flat honeycomb grid that then just goes right on the beauty dish like that. And you're ready to go. And this is the throw that it puts out. It's not a narrow 10 degree beam, but it does focus the light a lot more than when you just have a standard reflector. I've used it in a bunch of photo sessions as recently as this one here. So here's a picture where I'm using just a basic diffuser. And here I am using the honeycomb grid with the beauty dish. Notice how the light is only focused on our upper body. I didn't want to blow out the white suit. So if you really want to get the sex toy, the Bowen's ribbed snoot, it's an SN01, it's $22. And if you want to get, that's for the 8600, if you want to get for the 8200, you get these two as a set, $19. Now what if you don't have these? There's other ways to get a little beam of light when you're on location in a pinch. For example, I was in the jungle in Hawaii, I took a page from a magazine and I curled it up and I made a tube out of it and stuck it in the flash and it worked perfectly. It worked wonderfully. This is a piece of paper rolled up. That was an 8360, it's the same quantum mount as an 8200. Anyway, you just get a piece of paper, and you roll it up and you just stick it in the hole of the, uh, the flash here, like this. <laughs> There's your snoot. I mean, how simple is that? I mean, you can use anything. And another way to do it, I did a photo shoot in an alleyway in Hawaii and I had nothing but some tin foil. And I rolled up the tin foil and I stuck it around the AD200 and it focused the light only on her and it worked perfectly. I took some great pictures with some tin foil wrapped around an AD200 on a light stand. And the cool thing about tin foil is you can make any shape you want. You can make a wide thing or a tall thing or a star shape. Tin foil is great for making a custom shaped light on the background. All right, let's move on to video lights now. On the old days, Spotlights used to have <clears throat> a Fresnel, this thing right here. And a Fresnel is a glass with this kind of pattern on it which focuses the light in a beam. And by moving this glass forward and back, you can get a effect of making the beam narrower and smaller. I'll get to that in a minute. But something they used to make the light more precise was barn doors. And they still do to some degree, but this is really old school. You put barn doors in here, they're metal things that you then you can uh, narrow the beam by, you know, putting it in this way or this way. I don't use barn doors anyway. It's, it's heavy, it's clunky, it's, it, it gets hot, and it's just, I mean, you can focus the lights with this somewhat, but I don't do that. Another way to do it if you want a beam of light is you put something like that in there, you know, like a tube that makes a tube of light. And if you want to make it even smaller, you've got an even smaller tube of light, like this. Now you have, now this, if this actually works, it's just a tube, just like the piece of paper I showed you. You know, you could do this, this is great, I mean, wonderful. But nobody uses these things anymore, this is really old school. What everybody uses nowadays is LED lights. Now the poor man's way of doing it is get a sheet of cardboard and put a hole in the middle of it. Hold it in front of the light. <laughs> this is so simple. And you have a nice beam of light. Now, the further away you get from the light, the sharper the light gets. And you have a nice clean hole pattern on the back. And then the closer you get to the light and further away from the person, 
the hole gets bigger and it gets softer. I mean, how easy is that? Between tin foil and cardboard, you got it made. Ah, but there are those men out there who want to impress people with their equipment. They want big manly cameras and big manly lights. All right, and let's show them what the options are. Here we have an LED light. This is what everybody uses nowadays, and they usually have a Bowens mount. So, with that, you can now put on a Fresnel lens, and a Fresnel lens, Focus is a beam of light. This is a Fresnel lens. All right, so I put it in position, I turn it on, and this is how a normal throw when the Fresnel is in wide, and then when you put it in spot, the light gets more intense and gets smaller. So this is pretty good. I like this because it has a nice smooth edge. It's not a hard edge. And uh, this is tungsten, by the way. That's why it looks so orange, sorry. But anyway, so this is a good, I like, I use these a lot. I've got hundreds of these things. Well, I've got dozens, not hundred. Anyway, so it's like a hundred bucks for a Fresnel lens. It's a, the aperture I think makes the best one for Bones mount. See, it says on there, Fresnel two times. This is by aperture. It's like a hundred bucks. I highly suggest, now, the only thing about this is, it's, go oh, away, stop it, stop it. This is big and clunky and heavy. So that's the only thing that this has going against it. Not great for traveling, but uh, then again, I don't take big giant Bones mount spotlights with me when I travel. Anyway, this is more for studio stuff. So I got a bunch of these things. These things are great. Now, yeah, you can use the sex toy and put it in front of an LED light, but look at that. The, uh, look at that. This is maximum power. Look at the difference between that and a Fresnel. Look at that. Look at the difference. This is the same power coming out of the light, but the Fresnel is just, I mean, these things are so, Useless. Anyway, so then we get to this thing here, these big giant spotlight. They are also Bowens mount. You can attach a normal LED light like I just showed you. And here's a smaller version of it. Uh, this is by Dito Light. And what they basically are, and there's several companies out here that make versions of this. You got your LED light, and then you have your thing that has a, a so it's like a projector lens. You have a lens on this end and a lens on this end. And then you move <clears throat> this thing in and out like this, and that makes the, the beam smaller, 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 and narrower, smaller. I just created a new word. So anyway, this is Dito Light. This, this is $2,000 for you. To, probably don't want to spend that kind of money. There's other versions of it. Godox has a VSA 26K spotlight attachment kit. It's $380, and it has an optional narrower 19 degree lens. That's what I'm using here. Aperture has one, $440. Well Making has one. There's my favorite Chinese brand. <laughs> Bone mount, it's 170 bucks. Make sure you don't get the projector kit that Godox makes for their S30 light. That's just meant for a weak 30 watt light. Now, what is a gobo? A gobo, well, first of all, there's this thing, the, uh, a template that slides in into the slot of the device. The smaller one, this has a round one here. Um, but that slides into here. And in this thing is a hole, and that hole is filled with some kind of pattern that will project a pattern onto the screen. Okay, so I have a gobo design in here now. And all I need to do now is focus this light. Watch this. You see that? Look at that. That is so cool. You can put any design you want in there. You can make it softer. So it's just a soft design. Or you can get it out completely, just make a normal light out of it. I use the gobo in the background of this shot to just kind of break up the background, make it look like it's some foliage. Just be artsy. Kind of cool, huh? It's like an old uh, slide projector that they used in school. So that's how you put a spotlight on someone's face and focus attention on something in the shot. I hope you found this video enlightening. And hopefully I'll see you again next week. Until then, have a great week. Bye-bye.